is why I believe information is more important than money. Information is power. Somebody called me. I can call her a family friend, but we're not that close when I was in Nigeria. I didn't know this family has been for over six good months. They didn't tell me when they were coming. They didn't tell me. They know I make content, but they did not tell me. They did not call me. They've been in the UK for over six months. Do you know why they called me? The woman was crying. She was crying. She was in Nigeria. Doing not too bad, doing good, but averagely. They are not thinkingly rich, but they are average. This woman is the one that has their broad dream. So she was the one that pushed, I would not say pushed, encouraged the husband for them to travel to the UK. They did not tell me. They did not phone me. I'm not saying everybody should phone me, but I'm saying like, you know I'm in the UK. You know I make UK content. You know I talk about immigration. You know, it's not like I'm an immigration officer or anything, but I can advise you. They came to the UK with five children. Five ch young children. They came to study. The woman is the one studying. The man is the dependent. Why she called me was that. She said, Gloria, is it true? Gloria, is it true that she has to pay for post-study work visa after her studies? I'm like, of course. She said she didn't know. She was crying bitterly. The thing is, she said they sold their house, of course sold their car, sold their property for them to be able to come to the UK on a study visa. They came, they borrowed money, like millions of money. Where this money went, the children's visas, the children's immigration health surcharge, their own visa, their immigration health surcharge, and the school fees deposits, and the proof of fund, like the deposit. So, that they are owing now, as they are speaking, they've been in the UK for over six months, they are owing the balance of the school fees. They are owing people in Nigeria and they keep calling them every day to pay them the money back. She was calling me because she wanted me to borrow her money. She was crying, like, I mean, bitterly. She was crying. She said she regret coming to the UK. That nobody told her. I said, no, there's no way somebody did not tell you. Just that you will have seen, be one of the people that will have said, eh, it should be you, you are there, you are there. Let us come, we will come, we will be all right. That's it. That's the reality. But the fact that she did not know that she has to pay for post-study work visa is actually surprising me. She said she thought it was automatic. It is not automatic. For you to get post-study work visa, number one, you have to have passed in your school. The course you're coming to study, you need to have passed it. If you don't pass it, you're not going to get post-study work visa. Now, she said she cannot even read. She'll go to school. She'll be crying in the lecture. She has not even finished paying for her current school fees. Now that she now discovered that she has to pay for post-study work visa, meaning she needs to pay for another immigration health charge. She needs to pay for the visa for all her children. The husband is working full-time. But the money the man is making is not enough because they have to pay house rent. She has five children. She cannot just take her bag and decide to go to work. Somebody has to be at home to take care of the children. The husband is working, but the money is not enough to cover all the abuse. Now, she's stranded. She's looking for money. People in Nigeria are calling her because they believe that the moment she gets to the UK, she'll be able to pay the money back. Before she found house, she couldn't find accommodation for almost three months, according to her. So that was where some of the money also went because they were paying for hotels and B&Bs and moving from one place to the other. I mean, information, before you go to any country, before you pick your bag, research 